This video is brought to you by Moft. iPad OS 16 is a big deal for the iPad. It's so big, I would argue it's just as important as the launch of the iPad Pro 2018 models, which brought the hardware, and then of course iPad OS 13 brought more capability, but this redefines what this product category can do now, and it's especially amazing for students like myself, and today I wanna to give you a demo that reflects that. The first feature that I wanna talk about is dictation or the enhancements made to it. Um, this is not like super exciting, but it's very, very useful. So now you can sort of be dictating, but also typing, like actively dictating and typing simultaneously. Let me show you how that looks. So I have a paper here that I wrote for a bio class I'm taking right now. So I'm just gonna make some stuff up on the fly. It's not gonna make sense, but let me just say, radiation is super interesting and I love to write about it in a college paper so I can stop. Actually, he's gonna keep listening to me. So it's kind of hard to demo this feature because when you talk, it'll listen to you and punctuate. But when you stop talking and just type like this, like it just stops listening to you. But when you start talking again, it just continues like you never stopped. And um, also too, like the punctuation is more natural. So if you're writing a paper and you don't feel like, you know, typing everything or, you know, you want to be more specific with your wording, you can just stop talking. So yeah, that's the way this feature works. I didn't really anticipate it kind of affecting the demo because I'm just talking. That's kind of what I have to do to tell you what's going on. But it's picking up what I'm saying so, so well. So yeah, I mean, it's a great feature if you do a lot of writing, a lot of emails or whatever, and you don't always want to be just like flying on the keyboard or I don't know. I, I was about to say if you want to be quiet, but that doesn't make any sense because if you're talking, you're not being quiet inherently. Anyway, this is a great demo of this dictation feature because it's really keeping up with my rapid uh, speech patterns. So there you go. Dictation is really great with iPadOS 16. Feature number two isn't actually out yet, but I do have to mention it again because it's so cool. It'll probably be out in iPadOS 16.1 this fall, and that feature is Freeform. It's all about collaboration. It is a virtual whiteboard where you can drop in files and just write and you know have a freeform sort of dialogue between people over FaceTime, you know, with writing, images, files, etc. It's super cool. It has to be a nightmare for developers to put together, or Apple's developers. So that's probably why it's coming in the fall. Um, but yeah, when it does, it's gonna make brainstorming so, so cool, and it's gonna be great for me with my own media and YouTube work, talking to other creators to come up with ideas, maybe like thumbnail sketches or whatever. And then for school, uh, a lot of people own iPad. You know, a lot of people on my campus I see with iPad Pros and the Apple Pencil, or even just regular iPads. So um, I believe this feature is exclusive, or, or non-exclusive, excuse me, to most iPads. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong in a little message right here, but um, yeah, I'm super excited to test that out, and that will be something I demo in the fall uh, in another iPad OS 16 oriented video. All right, feature number three being shot on a completely different day because I got frustrated with my demo and took a two day break is uh, display scaling. As you can see here, I have the UI scaled as we've seen it for the past couple years, but now um, with iPad OS 16 on M1 iPads only, unfortunately, um, you can now scale the UI smaller. But you know what, before I do that, I just wanna show you what apps look like typically. Here we have Lightroom in the stage manager mode, but I can also put it um, in full screen. We can also look at uh, Safari here. The buttons are bigger. This is more oriented towards like touch, using your finger, which is what the iPad has been about since day one. But you know, now we have the cursor and the Apple Pencil, so I'm sure Apple was like, what if we let people have more screen space or a smaller scaled UI? So we can go to settings. We can then go to display and we can also go to the built-in Reddit display and then turn scaling to more space. It'll restart your iPad. Um, but as you can see here, once we're in, um, the UI is scaled smaller. Now, if you have trouble seeing things, this might not be for you, but I mean, for me, I'm fine and I'm using the keyboard and trackpad all the time anyway. So this makes your iPad feel bigger, even though it's not. And you can do split screen a little better. So we can go to, for example, uh, Google Docs here. I can make it see, and see how it's so much nicer in Stage Manager, which is a feature I will demo in a few here, but we can scale it bigger if I maybe. Of course, demos never go the way I want them to. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm just gonna do full screen here. Let me see, zoom. Yeah, there we go. So here's the full UI, much bigger, much nicer. You can uh, you know, see more of what you're doing or just, I guess like more of the UI basically. You get more UI in the same screen space. We can also open up Safari here. Nor a normal split screen, um, maybe, just kidding. 
Oh, you know what? I think I have to disable stage manager. So if I go here and I go here, now I can do that. There we go. So apple.com. So yeah, like this makes it feel like you have like a 14 inch MacBook Pro, even though you really don't, it just takes better advantage of your screen space. And again, if you're somebody that can see and you don't need things scaled bigger, you might as well do it because you will have more screen space, at least virtually to work with. Oh, and real quick, before we continue with the video here, I have two quick plugs. First and foremost to Paperlike, a channel sponsor. Um, I use Paperlike screen protectors religiously. I really can't use an iPad without one. I don't like using the Apple Pencil on a completely glossy display. And it just makes your Apple Pencil note taking, drawing, sketching experience so much better, so much more natural. I've always been somebody that is sort of gravitates towards paper and pencil and notebooks and such. So if you're big on that, definitely check them out. They include two screen protectors in the box or the packaging here. If you screw up the installation, they have a great video explaining how to do that as well. Also too, I have a brief message from today's video sponsor, Moft, and their incredible tech accessories. They were kind enough to make this video possible and send over their Snap system for iPad to check out. Their snap case is super slim, which lets it fit perfectly on your iPad Pro or Air and is compatible with the Magic Keyboard thanks to its patented pass-through technology. It also has a great dark minimal look featuring vegan leather that helps prevent scratches and has a cradle for your Apple Pencil, which prevents it from getting knocked off when out and about or inside your bag. Beyond its great design, the snap case allows you to magnetically snap onto their tablet stand, snap float stand, and their snap wall pad. I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested in checking these out. All right, next up, let's talk about one of the big features and that is Stage Manager here. Unfortunately, it is an M1 exclusive feature, um, but it's really great and it really does redefine the way iPad works, especially with regard to external display support, which we'll talk about. But now you have a sort of windowed mode that you can view apps in here so you can quickly switch in between them. So if I'm like writing a paper here or doing some kind of test or whatever, I can then, you know, scroll through Safari here, read some information, just quickly work back and forth, back and forth, sort of like you would on a Mac, right? With just resizable windows here, except this is a lot more neat and is more true to the iPad form factor. So many people were like, oh, I wish we had resizable windows just like we would on a Mac. But I don't know, it just doesn't seem to fit iPad OS and Apple has always really made everybody aware that they wanna keep the iPad a distinct experience. So this is the closest we're gonna get, but also too, I really enjoy it. It's it's neat, it's organized, it is getting better, it still is under development in the public beta, but um, I really enjoy it and you can have like multiple different uh, windows open too, like three at once I believe. So, oh, you know, there's some crashing involved, but that's fine, it's a very intensive feature. Um, especially because you have multiple instances of apps open all at once. So it's of no surprise that it's still not quite ready. This is why um, I waited for the public beta to demo this, but let's see if we can open an app or two here. Um, I can sort of close this. We have this open still. How about I open an instance of YouTube? There you go. So here's three windows open for here um, <laughs> with my YouTube search results. All great videos, of course, I will watch later. But yeah, um, this is a great feature. Um, I'm really excited to use it in class when I'm researching, especially, or just not even researching, I don't really do a bunch of research except if, if it's for work, but um, just having the ability to switch back and forth between windows like this and resize them really, really nicely as well is great here. Um, like for example, I can make this really small and that just reorganize things like that. Um, but also too, you know, I, I'm not gonna lie, there are some instances where I do wanna use the traditional split screen, like this just works better um, sometimes, you know, and, and it's a sort of classic experience here, which is made even better with the display scaling. Um, but yeah, Stage Manager is definitely a game changer, especially considering, you know, it brings external display support to the iPad, which is our next feature or topic of discussion. And finally, let's discuss the feature I was most excited to hear about during WWDC, and that is proper external display support. Is it everything we ever wished for? No, it's not Mac OS. There's no resizable windows, like I said, or like a truly Mac OS style resizable windows like we get in Mac OS, um, but we do get the stage manager experience. Uh, full screen, no black bars, no mirroring, no kind of half-baked experience. This is truly something special and it makes me really excited because for the longest time I just didn't want to sort of put more into the iPad because I knew that the iPad form factor was really all that it was, right? You could mirror 
but really you're just working within the confines of this you know aspect ratio or whatever just the the confines of previous versions of ipad os but now we have a completely unique sort of kind of mac like experience that i really enjoy here so if i was working on the go taking notes taking a test whatever if i was a student and i wanted to rely on one device i can now work on the go but also sit down at home and get to work you know and open safari for example and like scroll through a wikipedia article and maybe check canvas or whatever if i can even sign in let's try that out I, I hate the, there's a dual factor authentication. I don't care if people hack into my account and look at my terrible grades. There we go. So here is my Canvas page. I'm taking summer classes. I can read my stuff, not on the iPad screen, not mirrored, but like a full screen, you know, Safari experience. I can also make it full screen, I think. So if I, would do, I choose the zoom option up here, there we go. It's just like I'm on a Mac, but not quite, but I don't care because it's full screen. It's crazy. Um, we can also minimize this. I can also open up YouTube. You know, I do enjoy watching YouTube on my Mac or on like my studio display, for example, which is another compatible monitor. Even though this is not, I wanted to use something more affordable or more accessible. This is the Dell U2720Q USB-C monitor. It's fantastic. Um, so I can move YouTube to the, to the display here. And some apps take, are, are taking a while to, I guess, take advantage of this. I mean, this is gonna crash right now. Um, see, like, it's still a feature that's in development. You know, this is a really intensive sort of experience. You, you are sort of opening apps in different, like you have an iPad OS experience and you have the stage manager full screen experience all being run on the M1 chip. So um, it's of no surprise that this is, you know, stuttering a bit or having some hiccups here and there. Um, that's why I wanted to wait until the public beta because it was even worse in the developer preview, which I didn't publicly show. Um, but here we go. I can open up YouTube again. It should open up, I'm pretty sure. Um, maybe not. I can scale it a little bit smaller. Um, well, that's not working right now, and I don't, I'm not even going to cut it out. You know, this is still an under development. Here is Lightroom, for example. Um, it's gorgeous. Um, I love the fact that I can actually work on something not on the iPad's display. And of course, on the go, it's good, you know, when you want to have a portable experience. But here, I have pretty much the experience I'd get with my Mac on my studio display or the monitor connected to a Mac. So I really enjoy that here. You can just sort of interact with the UI, with the cursor, uh, with the mouse if you wanted to as well. So I'm a big fan of this here. We can also open up, how about Google Docs? I use this all the time. Here is a bio exam or answers that I was putting together. Maybe we can open up a paper like I did earlier. Um, I can also make this full screen. So we can do Zoom. And here we go. I'm writing a paper. Um, maybe it's, yeah. So this, this stuff happens right now. I'm not even gonna hide it. There's no point in you know acting like the operating system is perfect. It is a public beta. You should understand what you're doing. And personally, I wouldn't, unless you absolutely don't rely on your iPad for everything, I wouldn't install it yet. Um, in the fall, it should be better. But at least we get an idea of what this can do. I can also open up Spotify here. And just like with Stage Manager on the, um, on the iPad's display, we can switch in between the views here. So you can be working on a photo for a minute, taking a break, be doing your homework, switch to some music, resize the window if you want to. It's really nice. And the fact that you don't have to buy a MacBook to get an experience like this is phenomenal. So if you're big on the iPad and you want to have it be your end all be all device, this is what's gonna do it, at least I think, because I was a big skeptic for a minute. I'm still a big Mac user and I probably still will be because of my workflows, but if I wasn't and I wanted to buy one singular device for school, if I was a big note taker, I would go with the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. It is fantastic and the fact that you can drive this experience, a unique experience, mind you, um, is just so exciting. And again, it really redefines what the iPad can do, especially for students like myself. And uh, yeah, that about wraps things up here. I hope you enjoyed this demo. I have as well, even with the bugs and the frustration and the camera is overheating and just whatever. It's always fun to do these. And again, I'm so enthusiastic about this update. I wanna share more about it, maybe shoot a day in the life, talk about it more in the fall as well when other features are fully baked or developed, especially Freeform. I wanna do a demo of that, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, expect some MacBook Air content coming from me as well. That device is chef's kiss incredible. Um, not exactly for me because I do, you know, really creative stuff, heavy duty stuff, you know, getting into like high res video and whatever, but it's an exciting look into the future, I think with Apple. And um, it's exciting for people who just need that laptop. You know, the MacBook Air M1 was already an incredibly powerful, lightweight device. And this thing brings that to a whole new level of design and form factor and fit and finish. So stay tuned for that. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.